In this video I'd like to talk about a composing technique or perhaps an arranging technique which I use day to day in my work as a professional composer. That is making melodies where there's some natural space between the notes of the melody and the space is filled up by additional notes, you might say filler notes. Those filler notes play a more supportive role, usually outlining some of the harmony. And so the end result is kind of a wall of notes, but with this sort of simple singable melody kind of buried in there and surrounded by all these other notes, kind of like what I was doing just now. So what I'm going to do is um, I've picked out a couple of examples from different types of music to show you you know, how that composing technique can sound in context. And then in the later part of the video, I'll just talk a little bit about how you might approach uh, applying this technique if you're composing your own music. So this first example I'd like to play you is very famous. It's by J.S. Bach. You've almost certainly heard it before. As I play the example, um, see if you can hear this like simple melody that I'm talking about that's then surrounded by all of these other notes. Um, and notice that there are no times where there's more than one note playing at a time. It's This is a very linear kind of technique. Um, there's only ever one note at a time. So yeah, listen out for that simple melody. See if you can kind of find that through line amid all of the cloud of notes. So to me, the melody kind of starts here and then we sort of follow it in quite a stepwise motion and then it later goes to some leaps. Back down. Up. Down. stays on the same note. So down. So as you can hear there in the first example, we have this combination of two elements, this sort of cloud of notes, this continuous stream and flow of notes, but at the same time this very spacious and very linear and quite simple and very singable melody. Let's move on to the next one. This is another piano-based composition. By the way, this technique isn't limited to keyboard instruments. It can work really well on strings and other things, as we'll hear, um, but this just happens to be another piano one. You might not have heard this track before. It's called Desert on the Moon by one of my favorite Japanese jazz pianists, Hiromi Uehara. And this is, I think, a really great example of what I mean by shimmer. We hear the melody in a normal, quite linear fashion first, and then we hear it in this shimmery form. And so you get to kind of hear those two side by side. So here we go. transition. Here we go. So it's like a decorated form of the melody. What I really like about that example is, to me, it's very visual. You know, you've got this very evocative title, Desert on the Moon. And what I'm immediately imagining is just this kind of like surfing or like skating through the sand and like this really epic, endless, vast scenery. <laughs> and kind of this, this like just stream of notes, incredibly spacious and this great sense of just gliding, sliding through the piece. And on the repetition, you have these groups of semiquavers where the first note of each semiquaver is the melody note, and then the rest are kind of filler notes, which are filling in the harmony using an arpeggio. Right. 
really shimmery. Um, so yeah, just slowly, once again, we're just outlining like notes of D minor there and a kind of A minor, but that's still within the D minor key area. That's kind of implying a G minor or perhaps a E half diminished. Then we've got, which is kind of A dominant, maybe with a sharp, sharp nine. Kind of hitting that kind of chord with a flat nine on the B flat. So really just simply outlining the harmony. Let's have a look at the next example, which is by Vivaldi. Again, a bit more of a famous piece. Um, whack your speakers up for this one. This is a really great version of this piece. <laughs> So just focusing on those first couple of phrases there, and then later on in the piece we get this. So again, in both of those examples we have this really simple melody. But then we have all this filler material, which in this case, rather than um, outlining a chord or an arpeggio, like in the previous example, it's just holding down one note or maybe two notes. Um, so it's more of a, a pedal tone would be the kind of technical term for it. But especially in this first section, it's really clear. <laughs> It's not doing two notes at a time in the score. So every time the top note plays, then the bottom note stops. So we get that kind of jumping around. It just creates a certain kind of clarity. It's just a really cool arranging technique. For this next example, I want to specifically look at this YouTube piano version of Interstellar because I think it lays it out really clearly. Um, look at what the right hand is doing here. And the, the left hand's just doing bass notes here. It's quite a cool arrangement, this. You can uh, get the sheet music for it, I believe. If I play you the version from the film, you can kind of hear that it's it's doing a similar thing, although it's a bit less clear because of the way that parts are layered and the kind of the orchestration is a bit richer here. Nevertheless, there is this shimmery kind of effect. It's a bit hard to tell whether it's coming from a synth or whether it's part of the piano, maybe an organ part. Incidentally, there's um, another main theme in the Interstellar score by Hans Zimmer. Um, I'll just play it here. This time the pedal note is above the melody. And it's the bottom note that's kind of our melody, if you like. So it's the same sort of idea there. You could think of the melody as ba 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 ba, making a kind of zigzag pattern and following it like from left to right like that. But you could also, I think, legitimately think of it as happening two parts simultaneously where they just happen not to coincide with one another. As often is the case in music, you can interpret anything a multitude of ways. Um, but certainly in the case of a film score like Interstellar, which um, you know is in this sci-fi world, which is has to do with time and space, and um, this idea of having patterns within patterns, having two things which are also one thing, that has quite rich metaphorical connotations. Those are the kinds of things you can sort of be hinting at and implying in your music. The next musical example is from the world of video game soundtracks. It's from Final Fantasy XIII. Let's have a listen. It 
such a nice melody, this. I sort of don't want to cut it off. Just an awesome piece of music, ridiculously tasty, both in terms of the writing, the arrangement, the melody. Um, but what I wanted to focus on here is just this opening riff that then becomes a kind of looping background melody, a kind of counter melody um, that forms the basis for the accompaniment. Um, so this is an example of how this technique, this sort of shimmering melody technique, can be used as something that just forms a block or a foundation over which you can do a whole other main melody like what the flute is playing here. Melody combined and sort of interlocked or interwoven with sort of an accompaniment pattern which is playing arpeggios. And then we hear that continue as the melody kicks in, as just this nice little background riff. It just adds so much more kind of texture, filling in the background of the canvas. I want to do another example now that it feels like a little bit of a reach a little bit of a stretch. Um, but I think this is a legitimate way of, of analyzing this particular, again, very famous melody. Um, this is Nimrod um, from the Enigma Variations. Um, I'll just play a bit of it now. Possibly the most ASMR recording of this piece. This is the Leonard Bernstein one. Now, of course, that's so slow that we're unlikely to consciously think about multiple lines happening at once. As far as we're concerned, it's just a simple lyrical melody with some sort of paddy chords going on. Um, but I think that one way that you might sort of get inside the head of the composer and, and think about approaching writing something a bit like this um, is is kind of what we've been talking about. So, um, you know, to demonstrate what I mean, here's the melody line. Let me stick the keys up on the screen again. Here's the melody line without rhythm. So, and added a faster tempo. So here are the melody notes for the first part. And so on. Um, I'll speed that up again. I mean, it's a pretty weird way of hearing Nimrod, but bear with me. So I think you could make the case that um, the melody, like the sort of melody proper, you could say is something like this.
Okay, so if I fill that in with filler notes... So especially here, when you have these kind of... When, when we're hearing it at a slow tempo, we sort of hear... Bum, 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 bum. But you could also hear that as... Bum, bum. And then the, the notes in between is kind of filler. Especially as it happens again. Going up and then... You could imagine that it stays up. Before dropping down. I would say at the very least that's one of the reasons why this works as well as it does. Let's not dwell on it too much, hey? I want to conclude with a pretty wild example of what can be done with just a single monophonic linear melody line that contains both melodic and accompaniment elements. Um, this is mad, and if you haven't heard it already, go listen to the full piece. Blackbirds singing in the dead of night. Boom, do, 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 do. Take this broken wings and learn to fly. For your life, but you were only waiting for this moment to arrive. Beep, beep, beep. Blackbirds singing this in is the dead of it. night. <laughs> to the absolute Be extreme. Be so and learn to sing. More your life. Mm -hmm. And totally born out of a kind of practicality. It's it's kind of born out of a desire to be able to accompany himself, I guess, when singing. Um, and the, the severe limitation of the human voice in this case. Um, and a kind of workaround to try and play essentially three different roles with the voice. So you've got like the main melody. <laughs> And then you have this sort of um, guitar-like pattern, which is like a sort of, um, you know, like a strumming accompaniment or something. And then you also have the sort of bass line. So you got like... Um, so it's essentially playing three different roles, bass, melody, and accompaniment, but all within a single monophonic line. Um, just pure magic. So thinking with like an arranger's hat on, you know, it shows you the possibilities of what you can do with just a single monophonic line on just one instrument. You might think in arrangement, well, I could I could give both the bass and the melody to one instrument, um, and maybe that would kind of create a cool sound or a, create some kind of um, economy, economy of purpose in the arrangement. Um, or it might just, you know, create a quirky, unexpected sounds to have one instrument both on bass and melody duties and to not have those two parts kind of overlap with one another but to be strictly linear about it, just like this performance. Um, you know, what kind of emotional effect might that have? In this case, I think there's just something quite like bouncy and playful about the way that it sort of jumps wildly between the different registers. Um, there's something just innately kind of slightly sort of off the rails about so hearing a low note immediately followed by a super high note um so you know again if we were talking more in terms of like scoring and um writing music for you know a game or, or a piece of animation or something we've mentioned a few different sort of adjectives and words you know things like shimmer or things like um, playfulness or humorousness i think that hiromi example is the one that really sticks in my mind it's like this really beautiful crystalline cascade of notes. Um, so very often when I'm thinking of how do I arrange or orchestrate a melody, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I have that sort of sound in my head where you just have this kind of and you know, maybe I'm thinking of a melody line like but actually I want to orchestrate it like and kind of like integrate the melody with loads of other notes around it. So that's what we're going to get into in the second part of the video. How do we actually start using and applying this kind of technique in our own compositions? So to my mind, there are basically two ways that you can approach uh, using a concept like this. The first is to think first of the melody and then 
fill in the gaps in the melody as you see fit. And then the second way would be more to think of the type of riff that you want to be happening and then to sort of improvise a melody while keeping the riff going. So let's look at the first approach. Let's just think of a simple melody um, in A minor. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, so. Just get that really nice and fixed in my mind. And then um, the one of the simplest ways you can do it is just to sort of um, just use one note. So um, in this case, I'll choose an E because it's nearby and it belongs to the chord of uh, A minor. So I'll just get my keys up on the screen here. So I'm going to use an E. So I'm just going bump, 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 keeping a note on every note of the grid. Bump, 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 bump. And where there are notes next to each other in the melody, I'm not filling it in. I'm just um, then going back to the filler note when I next have a space. Um, so that's one really simple method, just fill in the gap with a single note. Um, this works best for quite simple melodies. Uh, let's do one in a major key. Um, bum, bum, ba, da, da, da. Um, so we could do something like this. So this time, um, I'm deliberately keeping a, a kind of offbeat pattern with this single note. One, two, three, four. So in those bigger gaps, rather than rather than going like this. Which sounds okay. Um, I felt like the mood of the melody wanted to be a bit more spacious, so I went for this instead. Now, because this is a slightly more spacious melody, we do have the option of adding a bit more of like a shape rather than just a single note. So we could do something like this. So just, you know, playing with pairs of notes as our filler notes instead. How about G minor? Uh, da, 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 da. So just kind of fix that melody in my mind. Da, 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 da. Um, so again, we can just fill it in with one note. Da, 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 da. Works really well. An alternative approach might be to rather than just keeping the same note as your filler note, sort of move the filler notes alongside the melody in more of like a harmonizing way. I could maybe do something like this. So there you could see that I was almost um, creating a secondary line. Or using thirds or six, just choosing notes that harmonize more sweetly with that, uh, or more angularly, whatever, whatever flavor makes sense. How about uh, in F major? Da 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 de, da 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 
to make this one really busy, like you know, so that's the kind of rate of notes I'm thinking about. And I'll quite often actually sing that into my DAW if I'm composing, like just my voice. Something like that, you know? So I'm just picking uh, notes from the F major. That's like F major arpeggios. This is more similar to the Hiromi one. Uh, da. I could do it like that if I was just wanting to stay in F major the whole time. I guess more likely I would be changing chords a bit. Like. You know, um, so. Um, so far all of my examples I've been playing the filler notes underneath the melody. Maybe we should try one where the filler notes are above the melody. Something a bit more staccato maybe. Bum, 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 something like that. Uh, what key are we in? Um, so we want to turn this into like a shimmery kind of uh, something like that so just using notes from the arpeggio and on those faster bits of the melody just using one note Something like that. Uh, so yeah, that's thinking primarily in terms of melody first. So now let's think more about the riff first and then sort of improvise a melody based on that. So um, one of the patterns that kind of came up earlier is just this idea of using offbeat notes. One, two, three, four. So say I like the idea of having a part you know, whether it's a piano like here, or whether it's, you know, a flute part, or um, a clarinet, or maybe strings. I like the idea of having a part where it has this kind of pendulum motion, kind of like interstellar. One, two, three, four. remaining monophonic at all times, just one note at a time. But when there are notes next to each other, like here, I'm just suspending the accompanying pattern. If you don't like the stop-starty sound that that has, then just use a melody that kind of prioritizes the continuation of that pulsing. Keep to that eighth note grid and then you're always going to be able to hear the pulse without it getting interrupted. So there we started with the idea of the riff and then we built a melody around it. Um, let's come up with another riff, like say we want like a triplety um, arpeggio kind of thing like 
And let's have the filler notes be on top of the melody this time. So we're using the bottom. So at, at a point like that, for example, like I'm hearing da 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 as the melody. Like the pattern kind of wants to go and keep playing that G, but I might prefer to go one, one, two, three, one, two, three, and leave that open so that it's more clear that the melody kind of holds there. So that was using a kind of triplet bass as our jumping off point. How about something a little bit more complicated, um, like a ba bum ba ba bum bum, um, or even bum bum bum, using two notes. So there's quite a lot going on there. So either we kind of stick with that rhythm very rigidly and mess around with the actual notes to make a melody. So like. just pause the pattern from time to time to do what we want with the melody like um, but again it's that idea that you know, rather than having gaps in the notes, we're sort of filling up most of the gaps with riffs. How about one that's a bit more chromatic, a little bit more tense? Something like this. trying to come up with melodies that didn't just start on the downbeat every time to kind of challenge myself I was thinking one and uh, two you know da, 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 da. Um, yeah, that can be quite a good way to think of slightly different melodic shapes is to not always start on the, the downbeat on the one. So there you have it, a little overview of the topic of what I like to call shimmery melodies. Works especially well with keyboard music or um, things like guitars, harps, celestes, either in a background type role or just as the main featured melody of the piece. Um, it also works great in strings and woodwinds, um, just experiment and have fun with it. Um, if there's anything that you didn't quite understand in the way that I explained it, just let me know in the comments, I'll try to um, get back to you. In the meantime, have fun um, exploring and composing music, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.